Welcome to Almost 30 Podcast, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> When's he starting? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Thought I'd mix it up. You did mix it up and I'm lost. <laughs> You're Krista. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> I'm in full autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, we're so glad you're here. Thanks for choosing Almost 30. We know there's a lot of podcasts out there, about 30,000 to be exact. Yes, <laughs> honestly. Don't know how you found us, but we're <laughs> so happy. We've been doing this for seven years. Started on our closet floors. Now we're... Now we're in the big leagues, baby. We're in the baby. big leagues, baby. I mean, truly. We're in the big leagues. Um, but yeah, this is a show where... Hopefully you feel like you can come and laugh and be inspired and learn and grow and get curious. That's kind of what we're doing on the other side of the mic. So we're happy you're here. Yeah, this one's a fun one. I really enjoyed this conversation. I love these. Every once in a while, we like to stop talking about near-death experiences and aliens and Just trauma. talk about freaking <laughs> collagen talk about, and talk about skin. skin. <laughs> yeah, and just like, it's like the conversations we're having off, off the podcast too, like with friends. Yeah. Like it's just so nice to be with Kaylee and Danielle. And um, it's also fun because I feel like we haven't told you guys updates on our routines. Yes. Maybe in DMs or maybe on Instagram, um, whether it's our wellness routines or beauty routines. But I feel like mine is the more, I, the older I get, the less of a focus I have on it. It's simplified. Honestly. I know. It's completely. so simplified. Oh my God. Kim's like 10 step skin line. I'm like, ma'am. I know. Sorry. Also, so many pl plastic bottles. I know. It, like, who's to like? What? Are, what would ten I, steps? I bet they're recyclable, be? though. Okay. What would ten steps actually be? Cleanser, exfoliator, toner, moisturizer, serum. Pete what? Davidson's ball juice. <laughs> oh I don't my know. God. <laughs> Who knows? Oh I my actually god! Don't, but that's a good question. Ten steps. Ten is like, who has the time? She's like. Shh. Step five is actually Botox. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, Just honestly. inject it yourself. It's actually yes. what makes my skin smooth. Yes. Five through 10 is actually <laughs> surgery. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but we go all in on skin, skincare products with Kaylee and Danielle. They are just a wealth of information. They are experts. Um Danielle is the acne guru, if you didn't know. So when anyone out there struggling with acne, hormonal acne, um, you will want to take a lot of notes. She's so knowledgeable. But yeah, so our own routines, mm -hmm. yours has simplified. What simplified. does it look like? So mine right now, I'd say in the morning, I wake up and I will spray myself with Osea um, Sea Minerals Mist. Mm -hmm. I love their... It's just nice in the morning to be like, good morning spray. I'm going to spray my skin with sea minerals mist. And then I will do, um, ice roller on my face, which actually really helps with inflammation. So I'll do ice roller. Then I'll do element. Mm -hmm. I've been really into element mm -hmm. lately. So we it's have good in the morning. Yeah. Element. You can get, um, a free sample pack with code almost 30. So element drink element.com slash almost 30. It's electrolytes. Yeah. It's got magnesium, potassium. Um, and it's just so good. It feels, it tastes good. It's amazing. And then I will normally do a walk or I've been doing tapping lately. Mm. I have loving tapping with this person called Brad Yates, Yeats or Yates. Um, you'll find him on YouTube. He posts a video every couple of days and he's just the best. He's mm. just like a little goofer. He's like tap of the morning. <laughs> and then you do like a tap. He's like, you do tapping into all these different things. And cool. I found it to be really powerful because you're touching on these points in these meridians where you hold a lot of shame, trauma, or energy mm -hmm. around the issues that you're bringing up and then rewiring. So I'm loving tapping. I'll do that for like five to 10 minutes and then I'll meditate. Usually the babies will come on my lap when I'm meditating. We'll do a little Reiki moment. Sometimes I'll stretch. Sometimes I'll do my vibration plate. I love for like five yeah. minutes just to get some lymph moving. And then I might read, journal. That's it. Mm -hmm. my, I think that might be more complicated than people that I let on. But it's like a flow. Yeah. It's kind of just whatever. Yeah. I think for you, it's simplified. Yeah. For me, it's simplified. <laughs> I'm like, I've gotten pretty crazy. <laughs> um, For me, just making sure I get that freaking seven, eight hours at least. Mm -hmm. So important. Um, And then I've been actually going up to my roof, like within the first 10 minutes of waking up. So I'll just kind of like grab a little blanket and go up there if it's a little cool in the morning. And I just find 
not only taking in like that early morning sunlight and just kind of setting my circadian rhythm, but just like taking some deep breaths, being outside and letting, we've talked about this on the pod, but just like letting my eyes like, I know I'm going to be on the computer for Mm -hmm. work. So it's like letting my eyes just like see as far as they can see. Mm -hmm. And like on the roof, you could see the skyline and you just see the treetops and just kind of like taking that in. And that's just helped to kind of, um, it helps you through stress as well. Yeah. That nervous system reset where like, I've definitely had mornings where I just go right on my phone. So like I turn off my alarm and then I'll be like, and like just in some sort of world. And I notice I either get a headache or I notice just kind of like a tightness in my chest, not because anything's stressing me out necessarily, but there's just this energy of being in this little device rather than being, okay, let me like open up to the day. Like what is, what's in store for me? Am I open to miracles and just possibilities? And like the device kind of like locks you into like a very specific loop and feeling for the day. So I've just tried to get out of that by literally getting out and going outside. Um, and then I will come back down. I'll make my coffee as my coffee's brewing. I'll, um, put on either binaural beats or just my meditation playlist that I've created. And I'll either meditate to that or I'll just journal to that or, um, I'll just kind of like move to it and stretch and just kind of breathe and be, Um, and then after I make my little coffee concoction, which is usually like a bulletproof esque type of coffee. So it has healthy fats in it, like MCT ghee and, um, fresh, like Madagascar vanilla. I like a little vanilla note to it. I'll bring that and I'll sit, I've been sitting in front of, um, our red light device. So we have like, Mm. we each have like a big red light device, which has been so helpful for, um, just really hitting that mitochondria baby and just making sure the cells are recovering. Um, so if I have like just any, like if I have acne or if I'm like feeling any just like discomfort in my muscles or joints, it's like always very, very helpful. I'll do the front of my body and the back of my body 15 minutes each. Um, and during that time I can meditate. Sometimes I'll listen to, um, infinite intelligence, Abraham Hicks podcast, um, channeled by Esther Hicks. So that kind of sets the tone. And then I'll go to a workout. If I'm doing a workout, I'll do Pilates or a walk. Um, nothing too crazy. I'll do like a, a pretty intense workout once a week, maybe twice at most. Um, and then I'm off. But um, I forgot to mention water with lemon and salt. So I'll do my element mm-hmm. for sure. I usually do element during the day, but in the morning I'll do lemon and just like a pinch of salt. Um, basically, you know, what element is, is that salt, potassium, magnesium. Um, but super important for me to like hydrate, get my healthy fats. I put a little collagen protein in that coffee as well. Um, and I'll eat like a late breakfast, like 10. Mm-hmm. I'll do the red light too. The red light's mm, nice. It's so nice. I swear it's helped with my legs, like cellulite. Mm, I don't yeah. know if that's facts, but sure. I feel like the tone and texture of my legs is better because of the red light. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I don't know if that's real. Yeah. I just, I, I like the, I love the feeling of it. I've been doing like the back of my body. I've been thinking yeah. about like. Your adrenals. Yeah. Adrenals, yeah. kidneys, yep. liver, all these things on the mm-hmm. back of our body. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's felt really good. Yeah. It's nice on the vibration plate. I'll just lay sometimes mm-hmm. and just like shake all that out. Mm-hmm. And also your digestion. Yeah. And sometimes my back will like catch and it's like, ah, <laughs> I'll literally fucking have a spasm. I'm like, oh, God. it'll hurt so bad. The vibration plate is is fairly affordable. I got it on Amazon. It was like, oh yeah, hundred bucks, hundred bucks, something like that. Cool. It's not a super nice one, um, but it's easy. And then the red light devices are from Juve or Blue Blocks are really good. Mm-hmm. Element is from, you know, wherever. And then meditation playlist is on your Spotify. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll link that. We can link that in the show notes. Um, But yeah, and sometimes it's like even like just really simple, Mm -hmm. you know. So um, saying that because I feel like that morning time really sets the tone for the rest of the day. And I even notice like, you know, we're talking about skincare today. I notice like the state of my skin based upon Mm -hmm. like what I'm doing in the morning. 
-hmm. So if I'm getting up, I didn't hydrate properly or I'm drinking coffee without those fats. Like I notice my skin kind of react, whether it's like it's a little inflamed or it's dry or what have you. Mine's always with sleep. Sleep. I look my yes, sleep, my course. skin looks so much worse with sleep. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Huberman, Andrew, Andrew Hubie. Hubie baby. Our boy. Call us. <laughs> Call us. <laughs> Literally um talks a lot about the, you know, looking at the sun, the morning sun mm-hmm. quite a bit. So you can look at a lot of his work around that. And then there is a stress response. Like there is a lower, I don't know if it's a cortisol response that lowers your cortisol when you're able to look at further, further distances because yeah. you're able to relax. The muscles in your eyes that allow you to look up close Mm -hmm. and then engage the muscles that allow you to look farther away. And it provides like a more soothing response to the body by doing that. I know, me too. So nice. So it's really important if you can just relax the eyes to look far in the distance. If you're looking at a mountain or trees Mm -hmm. or just finding something to do that, that's one of my favorite little tricks because you can feel it happening with your eyes. You can feel the relaxing of the muscles and the engagement of the other muscles and it feels really nice. Totally. Totally. Any skincare stuff that you're using lately that you're like, oh, I do use clear stem. Their mm-hmm. bounce back serums bomb. I know. I love it. So Their much. exfoliators bomb. Their moisturizer is really good too. I actually just finished my Hydroglow. little bottle of that. Osea is also my, uh-huh, my fave forever. Um, but nothing else. We get so much stuff sent to us. I kind of try stuff every once in a while. But yeah. you know what else is really bomb? Moon juice. Um, Their jelly. They have a plump jelly mm. is like incredible. Cool. I've no, like that was one product where I was like, wow. I, in addition to Clear Stem and Osea, that was one product where I really noticed a difference. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. I really love their that. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Clear Stem fan. It's like after I got over the acne hump, I feel like it's just kept my skin really, really healthy, clean, um, and glowing. The vitamin scrub, I really love Clarity. Um, and the Hydra Glow are kind of my three in rotation. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're the bomb. You can get their clear skin kit if you want. So you can go to clearstemskincare.com and check out their clear kit. And um, you can use almost 30 code for 15% off. And you can use almost 30 code for a discount on any of the products on the website. Highly suggested. It's super high yeah. quality. It's great if you have acne prone skin or if you're looking to um, prevent you know, the effects of aging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually those two things can't happen in one product, but they do with Mm -hmm. Clearstone, which is incredible. Y'all gave us some incredible questions of your own that we incorporated Mm -hmm. into this conversation. So get out your notebooks because it's a good one. Yeah, it's so good. It's like, it's interesting because, you know, on the surface for me, I'm such a like, tell me about the hermetic principles. I'm like, so like deep into Mm -hmm. some shit. And then I come to this, I'm like, skincare sometimes. But then when we have this conversation, I'm like literally drooling. I'm I like, know. Everything is so interesting and yes. it's so refreshing to learn about because these are things that we are using every day, like sunscreen or mm-hmm. we're applying um, different types of products. Like it's good to understand what you're doing, understand why you're doing it, understand the process of it and just get super clear. And then you're like, okay, I know this information. Now I know how to live yes. and I can move on. And have the right products and have the right principles and have the right understanding. Yeah. And understanding your own skin. Yes. Because like we can think a product is for us, but it's really not. You know what I mean? Like you and I have very different skin where like you can probably do anything and your skin is like very calm, but like with certain products can activate my acne or like Mm -hmm. just certain things. So it's like, it's very important that we understand the type of skin that we have. Yeah. Um, So yeah. You're going to love it. Kaylee and Danielle, the founders of Clear Stem. You can go to clearstemskincare.com, check out the products, check out their mission ethos. Um, it's really quite rare in the skincare world. Check them out on Instagram, Clear Stem Skincare. And again, the code is almost 30 for 15% off. Yes. And you can listen to the other episode that we did with Kaylee and Danielle. You can search Clear Stem Almost 30 and check that one out. It was super fun. That is like a 101 of finding all the information out mm-hmm. about skin. And this one, we went a little bit deeper. We focused a little bit more seasonal. And we talked about things that were like super relevant, like celebrity skincare lines and about collagen. Mm-hmm. You know, we went a little deeper. So I know you guys are going to love it. 
we appreciate you for being a part of our community and for being in our lives and choosing Almost 30. It means so much. If you feel called, it would mean a lot if you were to review. You can go to Spotify or iTunes and give us a little five-star review for some love. You can also subscribe to Morning Microdose, which is Mm -hmm. our baby. It is the hottest clips from Almost 30 and a little dose that you can listen to every single day. And then almost30.com for any Mm -hmm. of our courses, programs, membership, check it out. We're on TikTok at Almost 30 Podcast. Love y'all. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you. And we will see you on the other side. Because like everyone does like these cleanses and they're really oh intense. Oh my God. You get really and sick from like them. And shitting out worms. And yeah. It's like a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, let's do, let's like talk a lot of lady. Yeah. I was like talking to her. I'm like, should I do a liver cleanse? And she was like showing me photos of people's shit. I'm like, I'm good on all that. <laughs> I did an intense parasite cleanse and like I really would just rather do like a daily maintenance because you have flu-like symptoms for a, a week. No and, way. Yeah. Because it's like the die-off symptoms. Like you actually get really sick because when the parasites die, they release a bunch of mitotoxins. And so you have to be doing things that like keep your pathways open for like you have to sweat every single day and you have to go to the bathroom every day or else that stays in you. But you get like really sick for a week. What do you do to actually cleanse? It's like a it's a whole like supplement protocol. So you have like three different supplements you're taking to like move stuff through and then a couple different supplements that kill it off. It's usually like really high doses of reishi, like a couple other things, like extremely high doses. Did you feel better after? I did, but I think I would just rather do the daily maintenance. I I didn't feel like a a world of difference. I'm just always like, and also too, a lot of that's like the first time you do it, it's easy. And then it gets harder because you're going deeper. I'm like, what does that mean? I know. Like it was like. Deeper isn't always better. Yeah, Yeah. I know. (laughs) That's the thing with the, with Mm -hmm. also with breakouts. Is this even with skin? Okay. To skin, which we'll talk about and and not talk about. We can talk about everything, but (laughs) when people are like get facials and then they break out, they're like, oh, it brought it to the surface. Is that true? Because I'm always like, I don't, Mm -hmm. what what if I never win? I wouldn't break out. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, there's a couple ways that could be true. And then there's a few ways that it's not true. So if you already had congestion in your skin, like say you were using like a lotion with a bunch of coconut oil in it and your pores are super clogged, your skin could be like, like they could just be clogged and your skin's not really like erupted yet. But then a facial can do that because of the exfoliation it can open up your pores and then the steam makes everything come to the surface so that can happen that said you could also be not acne prone at all and then they go and use something on you that doesn't agree with your skin and that Mm. creates acne so without really knowing what was going on before it's really hard to know what if that was true Mm -hmm. or not yeah it could also be like when they clean everything out they're doing all the extractions all the steam everything like danielle said and then you go back home and you're still using products with poor clogging ingredients it just gets even deeper and then you break out even faster oh that's interesting yeah because yeah. so like, your pores are open yep they're so got open it. um most yeah. of the time when a facial goes wrong for someone it's because they got exfoliated and then what they put on afterwards yeah. was filled with pore cloggers because almost 95 like what i've seen in my eight years of clinical experience doing this and reviewing people's products and getting sent products because i'm an esthetician i get sent yeah. products all the time i've tried everything over 90% of them have pore cloggers. I would say closer to like 95%. Wow. If I see something that happens to be safe, I'm shocked. Yeah. It's really? literally a shocking thing. Like, wow, this is actually great. Keep it. Use it. If it's working for you, great. But normally that's not the case. Pore cloggers. So we've talked about this before on the show, but I think it deserves just a little bit of a review. Can you can you share like kind of the top pore cloggers that you find in a lot of skincare products so people can be aware? Happily. So there's the natural category and then there's the other category that um, people would never know to, they would never know about unless they're specifically being told. So the, the chemical ones that are the most common ones that are in things from like CVS, but even also in makeup brands like that you know and love, like Tarte and Laura Mercier and like Benefit, like a lot of these brands still use a filler agent called ethyl hexyl palmitates. It's very common in makeup. It's a derivative of like coconut oil and palm oil, and it just makes for a cheap, long lasting shelf stable filler agent. Mm-hmm. So a lot of companies use it. So there's ethyl hexyl palmitate, then there's isopropyl myristate, then there are just ra- other random ones like Loreth 4, <laughs> Loreth 23. Um, another one that's really common in a very common sunscreen is um, called isopropyl palmitate. Um, and it's it's a really common filler agent in a lot of like tinted sunscreens. Okay. Yeah. Then there's the natural stuff. Like the organic skincare still has pore cloggers too. So coconut oil is a perfect example. Shea butter for sure. 
algae, algae. <laughs> seaweed, kelp, like anything that basically comes from the sea for the most part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And well, that was always shocking to people. But if yeah. something can live underwater, it has to have a thick, oily membrane. Otherwise, it would just disintegrate. That's why we think can't stay underwater like, that yeah. long. Think about if you're like ever in the ocean, there's seaweed everywhere and it gets on you and it's so thick and oily. Yeah. Like that's the, what's extracted. Hmm. So it's just like I noticed that I can I do that made. on my. So it works for me. <laughs> yeah. I can do it on my body. Like some like I've done like mm-hmm. um, oils with algae in it, and on mm-hmm. the body it's okay, but yeah. not on my face. Mm-hmm. You're lucky. Yeah, a lot of people don't get body acne, but they will break out on their face. So yeah. that's consider yourself lucky. Yeah, <laughs> truly. Um, just to kind of close the loop before we um, hopped on, we were talking about lasers that bring about maybe hormonal acne Mm -hmm. just on the facials bringing about acne what other treatments can we be aware of that might agitate the acne because I feel like people are like on it with kind of doing the more like newer treatments in the office so what can they be aware of oh man okay so anything that shocks your skin if you're super acne prone right anything that shocks your skin can make you break out a little bit anything that dries you out like with a laser that uses heat Some lasers, uh, most lasers do use heat, but like some like actually burn and ablate the skin, like say um, the Clear and Brilliant is one that's really, really, really popular. It dries your skin out so much that it sends a mayday message down to your oil glands to start producing more oil, but the skin is so dry topically that the oil can't get out. So that's when people get like a whole like rash full of breakouts, essentially. Like all the oil glands are firing, but it can't get out because the surface is still dry. And that's really, really common. Uh, Microneedling can do it too, but microneedling doesn't use heat generally, unless you did the Morpheus. So that can be less aggressive. Mm -hmm. Um, Dermaplaning is a huge one too. You'll have people that swear by dermaplaning where it's amazing for their skin. And then you'll have other people that's like, I cannot do that. It'll make my whole face break out in rashes. Yeah. Mine does not like dermaplaning. Dermaplaning is shaving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But dermaplaning, it's with a scalpel. Yeah. And it can be, it scrapes the skin too. So it is actually a pretty gnarly exfoliation technique and doing it's really difficult. Like you have to be very, very careful to do it properly. And it's very easy to go too hard. And then you're just scraping the skin and it's very irritated. I've seen people with like literally red scrape marks. And then sometimes when you're doing that treatment, they do like an enzyme or something afterwards. And you don't know how the skin's going to react because it just got scraped before you did that thing. So So it could be way too harsh for someone's skin. But for some people, it's great. Yeah. I went to a facial once and she's like, do you, she was like touching my face. She's like, do you dermaplane? And not just because there wasn't hair, but she's like, I feel the roughness because I had just done it. Mm, and there, it, to your point of it kind of like agitating the skin or like kind of digging at it or scraping it. Scraping it, literally. Yeah. You can just shave your face. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. With a razor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like a men's razor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I literally wow. just, I wait until I There's know. There's something it. delicate about the drama. I know. So yeah. like, I, am, well, I am woman. I am woman. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me yeah. roar as yeah, I remove I'm my like, beard. I am woman. I'm trying to get in my nose. <laughs> yeah. That's my whole thing. Dermaplane, I was doing it a little too much one time, and my face was like a fucking bowling ball. It was so shiny. <laughs> like, I was like, yo. <laughs> now I do it like once, a, twice a year. Like, oh, rarely. Yeah. No. I have it, dark hair, so I need to like. Mine just gets so like fuzzy, like peach fuzzy almost. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I did the Morpheus though before my wedding, and What'd I really you think liked of it? it. I really liked it. It was interesting. I did, um, I did it one time with one person, and it was a totally different experience than with my normal person. Like the one time I did it with the the one person, it was a lot more intense. She was like freaking me out. She's like, "Are you? You know, I I cried. I could not even do this. It was so intense." She numbed me and it wasn't that bad, but I was like, I had to take a video because I got it free. And um, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Whatever. Whatever, dude. (laughs) Get yours. Whatever, guys. (laughs) I'm helping you out. (laughs) Um, So I was like, she's like, I like, she's like, oh, I was like, okay, I'm going to do a video. And she's like, I don't know if you want to. And I like did. I was fucking covered in blood. (laughs) My face was literally blood. You should have turned that into like, a TikTok. You should have wired it. You should have drawn as much attention as possible. <laughs> Dude, 100. I should be like, a, yeah, my TikTok is just like Morpheus. Oh, yeah. Morpheus before and after. You get <laughs> millions of hits in the, the next morning. I know. Literally, it people love me. the gross shit. You yeah. love it. They just do. Yeah. Um, and that one was good. But the one that I go to normally doesn't really, I can leave and it's totally fine. And I've liked it actually. But for me, it works because it's more like the remodeling. Like, it's more just, like, tightening and toning and sculpting, mm-hmm. I feel like, than actual, like, tone and texture. Mm. 
Cool. Yeah, I feel like it like literally works. I, my friend just got it done two by two different places. So yeah. the same thing. Like mm-hmm. one, it was really, really intense. They had a numb and it still hurt. The mm-hmm. other one, she literally barely felt it. Yeah. So I think, I think they go deep or, or high, yeah. but mm-hmm. I've done clear and brilliant. I've done Fraxel. And I feel like I did those when I was like in my 20s. So I didn't really feel that much of a difference. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like I'm kind of working more into lasers rather than doing things like Botox now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You Mm -hmm. have the type of skin that's going to respond really well to lasers Mm -hmm. and you don't have any melasma. So you can kind of go to town and try things. If you have melasma, like I get, I literally developed melasma because I was doing a lot of aggressive lasers trying to heal my acne. If you are melasma prone at all, lasers can make it flare up like crazy. Mm -hmm. So what is get, melasma? Melasma is those dark patches of discoloration. They're generally on the forehead or right under the eyes. They're usually symmetrical. So it'll be right under the eyes on the upper cheeks or in blotches all over the forehead um, or the upper lip. And it can be anything with heat in general can make it flare up, but lasers can really make it worse. Mm-hmm. So if you've got, you don't have it, you're, you are like mm-hmm. an ideal laser candidate. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for people that have melasma, they got to be really careful. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, blast me up. Right? <laughs> I'm like, Give me the Kim K. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Kim K, that shit blast. Blast my face up. It doesn't even Your matter. skin looks great. It Keep does. doing it. Yeah. I mean, but it does, it's good. But I'm using the Tarte BB cream, which I'm wondering if has those ingredients. Um, I mean, are you acne prone? You're yeah, you're not. You no. can use whatever you want. You're blessed. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> so okay. much, not so yeah. much. <laughs> I'm literally depressed because I have a pimple. <laughs> <laughs> Came back. Um, amazing. Okay. Um, I would love, you know, since we're kind of in the heat of summer too, I would love to just talk about skincare in the summer because mm-hmm. I feel like there's um, yeah, a lot out there about sunscreen, a lot out there about being in the sun, mm-hmm. getting our vitamin D, what is healthy for the skin, what is not. Um, and also I've noticed that like kind of the first few times in the sun in the summer, I have like a little heat rash or a skin breakout, not right now, but it, it happens pretty, um, regularly. So just wondering, you know, how to protect, but also not, use products that necessarily harm our skin let's kick it off with some sunscreens mm-hmm. just because i feel like the older that we all get now we're really starting to pay attention to sunscreen mm-hmm. i mean i really didn't care when i was younger yeah, remember my mom would like force me to put sunscreen on before i left the house i was like, wearing like baking oil like it. yeah <laughs> I was, like, mm-hmm. pouring on oil <laughs> and now we're all realizing what the sun actually does to our skin if we're not protecting our face it develops wrinkles faster any wrinkles you do have it makes them even deeper It dries out skin, which can cause different just irritation, rashes, make you sun sensitive, make your skin red, all the things we don't want. (laughs) So what you really want to look for in a sunscreen is making sure it's something that's zinc based. Zinc is the healthiest zinc or titanium. Our favorite is zinc though. It's so healthy for you. It's what um, baby diaper rash cream is made out of. So it's really anti-inflammatory, really calming. So if you do get heat rashes outside, it's going to help cut that redness, reduce any of the inflammation. Sometimes if you've been out in the sun all day and your skin is a little inflamed and swollen the next day, just from all the intense sun damage from it. So zinc is going to be best. The ones we want to avoid is the chemical-based ones, which we've been seeing everywhere for a couple of reasons. One, typically people don't want to use zinc because it leaves a huge white cast on their face. It's white, it's mm-hmm. gooey, it's sticky. It's not like people don't want to <laughs> want to do that. So they're going for the sheer chemical ones, the ones that are like oil-based that they can smooth on that feel like makeup. But the problem with these ones, and if you just flip over a sunscreen bottle, you'll see like active ingredients. It'll either say zinc or titanium, or it'll have chemical names like oxybenzone is one, mm-hmm. some, one of them. A couple of things with these, there's so many more studies coming out that they're staying in your bloodstream for weeks at a time. They're not like your liver isn't getting these out fast enough, um, like other toxins we can come in contact with. So they're staying in our bloodstream and they've been linked to like birth defects, cancer, all these things are coming out because it's heavy toxins, chemicals that are staying in our bloodstream for long amounts of time. So um, we still want to protect our skin every day, but we want to go for something zinc. There's a lot of great tinted zinc ones out there. Like we just came out with one, You Are Sunshine. It like has a little, like basically not a heavy tint because it's good for all skin tones. It's just enough to cut that white cast of zinc. So it makes you want to put on the healthy sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Um, So those are going to be ones that we're going to want to look for. And again, it's not the end of the world if you use a chemical one every once in a while. Like we don't want to ever scare people away from it. It's just one of those things like be conscious of for the ones Mm -hmm. that we're putting on every day. 
go for zinc. I actually just found this out from my hairdresser too. If you have blonde hair extensions, mm -hmm. the chemical ones turns them green. Yeah. Really? Yeah. If like, it's, if like your hair is like laying on your shoulder or touching your face and um, it comes in contact, it turns it green. So she's like, I always tell my clients that have blonde hair extensions, like they're not allowed to wear chemical based sunscreens, which wow. is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a really big thing to look <laughs> out like, for. Yeah. You're like, causes cancer yeah. can kill someone. And we're like, extensions <laughs> green. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The yeah, extension label. problem is an yeah. immediate thing. Yeah, yeah, that still like, happens later. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> So like we love educating about sunscreen because we, like we think it's so important to be out in the sun. Oh my gosh, that's how we get our vitamin D. And when we're out in the sun, like we're able to absorb other nutrients better too. Like we like we need vitamins from nature. So we want people to be out in the sun. We want them to be enjoying life, but we don't want people to have this fear that they're gonna like age drastically overnight if they're out in the sun. Like you don't have to cover up everything. Like put on some sunscreen, throw on a hat. Um, it's not the end of the world if you forget a hat. Like it's just you know enjoy the mm -hmm. sun, but protect your face. Yeah, I think that point up uh, there has I've heard a lot about the research around um, toxic sunscreens or sunscreens that have toxins in them, and so I didn't know what exactly they were doing. So that's helpful that you shared about those um, those research studies yeah. that are basically sharing that because there is something really off about it that I've heard about it, but it seems more conspiratorial, but now there's research coming yeah, out coming about it. Now. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really glad that it is because I feel like I've been telling people for so long not yes. to wear it. And now the studies are coming out. I'm like, this is what it's linked to. Like, it's not the end of the world. Just like if you're doing it every day, like go for a zinc or titanium. Well, I wonder if there's something interesting too about the fact you're wearing a toxin on your skin and then you're like baking it in the sun. Yeah. yeah. It it's probably like out. activates it. Yes. Yeah. Well, chemical sunscreens are the ones that burn your eye skin if it gets around there. So like, I think we've all kind of felt that like when we were kids. Yeah. Um, gets in your eye. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Burning. Your eye yeah. skin's extremely delicate. So yeah. uh, chemicals like that that are a little toxic and kind of, they're irritating basically mm -hmm. to a lot of of people um so it's just going to age you faster anything that irritates you is going to age you faster yeah zinc is like even the not only even thing skincare just like people <laughs> i'm like thanks <laughs> <Sure>. yeah <laughs> that, that'll be a anything quote that irritates you in life in general <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> just, just big facts so if we go a little bit further on the so what is happening then is that there's toxins that are being absorbed by the skin mm -hmm. that get into the blood can you talk a little bit a little bit about the journey of putting something on your skin to it being in the blood. Yeah, so it's pretty much just a different digestive process. So your one digestive process is you're eating food it's going directly into. But even if you go to the doctor, sometimes they'll prescribe you like a topical magnesium or a topical vitamin D because they want a different delivery system for it. So because the skin is an organ and it's filled with pores, it can it just soaks right in and goes through our skin and into our bloodstream. Like it's just another absorption system of the body. Mm. And there are certain chemicals that can cross the blood brain barrier. Mm -hmm. Are any of those in these skincare products or are we good? Um, you know, the sunscreens. So I'm not actually sure if they cross the blood brain mm -hmm. barrier. I don't, I haven't seen any studies based on that. Yeah. yeah. There's four, there's four main chemical sunscreens and each of them are kind of toxic in their own way. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I love to look them up. Like I don't have it memorized, but I love to like look them up individually sometimes just to, if I'm like ever writing some education around it. So if you just want like, if anyone wants to look on the back of what sunscreen they have mm -hmm. and just do a quick Google search of like what that chemical actually is, you can get just about better understanding of what it's doing. Could we say from a general sense that if it's in a spray, it's worse than if it's in a cream? Is there any differences? Generally mm -hmm. speaking, the sprays, because it, zinc is a white powder, so it's mm -hmm. actually thicker. So it doesn't generally come in a spray. They do have them now, but historically, they, but it was really, really hard to find. So to f go back like five years from now, um, backwards five years from now, all the sprays were chemical. Mm -hmm. Now people, they do want the spray sunscreen in a zinc form. So now there's like two or three that we know of, but yeah. most sprays are going to be the chemical ones because they're sheer and they go through the sprayer faster. Mm -hmm. So for any moms listening that want to protect their kids or just like beach goers that spray it all over, we love the Bear Republic brand. It's sold at Target. Mm. Um, Pacifica, Pacifica brand. Pacifica has we love one Pacifica. where it has some bronze shimmer in yeah. it too. That one's <laughs> okay. fine. Yeah. Um, is there a third one we like? Those are like the two main okay. spray ones we see a lot I that we recommend. I think my shell, my shell dermaceuticals yes. came out with one too. Yeah. Like brands are just now starting mm -hmm. to make sprays. Which we love seeing. Mm -hmm. Like we get Can really we excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where you have it. your face yeah. sunscreen. Yes. Okay. Which I love. Um, and 
in developing like these types of uh, safer and newer products, like I can imagine, and we're even talking about them without saying the brand names of these bigger companies mm -hmm. who have been around forever, um, but a lot of their products have chemicals in them. Like what has it been like to kind of come up feeling like against these companies in a way where like you're creating a product that's better for our bodies, better for our skin, better for the environment. Has there been any pushback? Like what has been that journey? It's been a little difficult because we don't like to bash brands. We just like to educate on ingredients to look out for. Mm -hmm. And I mean, let's be real. Like we know why they do it. They need to make margins better when people are scaling. And like, let's just say, you know, clear stem blow. It's like we didn't have like the values we did behind clear stem, right? Clear stem blows up. We decide to sell it to a huge name brand. They know nothing about poor clogging ingredients, about toxins. They just see margins, numbers. How can we scale this? So they reformulate it mm -hmm. to make it like do the same thing, but in a cheaper way, which can add poor clogging ingredients, add synthetic filler agents, all these different things. So that's what happens is some people, one, sell their companies and don't have control anymore. And it's just completely taken over and run with. Or these different products are created because skincare has great margins. Everyone needs it. Everyone wants it. So these companies are like, ooh, this could be like a huge cash cow for me. I'm going to make this, but I'm going to make it as cheap as possible and scale as fast. And it's people who aren't just as passionate about non-toxic or aren't as educated about it. They don't even know. So we don't want to like blame the brands that they're out to hurt people in any way. It's more just, okay, we're like, we're concerned about that. And we know a lot of women who are similar to us also care about that for not only themselves, maybe kids that they're having, family members. So we just want to get the education out there. Um, but as we get bigger, I mean, it is something like, we're very careful about to not drop a lot of brand names. Mm -hmm. things. We try real hard. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Sometimes we get asked a lot in our DMs, like if there's some trendy product out there, like, what do you guys think of this? What do you guys think of this? And we have to just be honest. And mm -hmm. then sometimes we'll, we'll do a demo where we, you know, copy and paste the ingredients of that trendy product mm -hmm. into the the search bar for the pore clogging ingredients and it'll see right there that it comes up red and then we'll s highlight the ingredients that are coming up red show where all the data is on that so it's like it's not just us making stuff up sure yeah. it's us delivering information that's already known by like acne specialists yeah. and non-toxic non-toxic specialists we always work on like trying to empower people with education too so just like danielle said when we get dms it's like wh like what do you think of this product i'll respond back like i personally wouldn't use it because of this ingredient but like i highly encourage you to like take a look at the ingredients, research them, and then like see what you think. So we really like to put the power back in people's hands because once they know more, they're then making decisions for themselves and how they feel rather than like, does clear some approved? Does clear some approved? They like, they know it internally. They're like, I don't like this for my body. And it's mm -hmm. like so fun to empower other people to like feel that way about themselves. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of celebrity skincare lines? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of no skin? name? Oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that frustrating? It is. Yeah, I think it's I annoying totally, to me. It's, I totally get yeah, it. Obviously. Honestly, well, we, it's like we what, like eighty percent margins yeah. on like cheap skincare. And think about yeah. a celebrity if they're complimenting on their skin all the time. They're like, they're, I'm sure they're pushed by their business manager, 100%. everyone else, that it's like. Just make your own skincare Pushed line. Pushed by so Kris you, Jenner. Yeah, so you can... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I saw... Said I, by us, not you. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to die. I saw a video the other day of what we're talking about. And the video is like, this is my everyday morning and night 10-step skincare routine. Literally. <laughs> I was like, that's not relatable. One hundred percent. The nighttime one ends just in time for your morning routine Literally. to start. Uh, but what's I think what's most frustrating to us is every single time one comes out, we jump on and meet. I mean, at least I do. I immediately check the ingredients. I immediately see there's like pore cloggers and filler agents, and then I'm just like, I'm not worried. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like honestly because yeah. the people who aren't acne prone will be fine with it. It's fine. But like we're trying to help the people who are struggling with their skin and want better skin. And so we know if someone switches over and tries it, they're going to come back or they're going to mm -hmm. find us. So mm -hmm. really not worried, but it is kind of frustrating sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just like not stay in your lane, but like at least learn your shit. I completely agree. Like yeah. learn your shit before you come in this I new lane agree. because you're messing with people's skin. You they, know do like, I mean? they do like one video of like them in the lab. They're like me working on my thing. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Like, like all of it. It's speaker. just like, <laughs> like, I, ju I just saw J Lo came out with oh, no J Lo body. 
So it's basically like body skincare. Cool. Um, sure. But like, this is the <laughs> thing where in my mind, Kim K and JLo are on like a, like yeah. a skin race. <laughs> yes. You know? Um, but it's really not what I love. And this is just me, you know, pumping you up, but genuinely what I love is like the science behind it. Right. And to your point, like learn before you kind of jump in and promote and create products, but they're selling themselves. So they're selling what they look like and what their skin looks like, which is not only these products, it's all the treatments, fillers and Botox and lasers and treatments and uh, a full nutritionist team and and photoshopping and 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 (laughs) so it's, you know, it breaks my heart a little bit because, you know, they look beautiful, but there's so much that goes into that and so much more than just these products. Yeah. And I don't think that's like talked about in, in an honest way. That's why Kim's like, there's 10 steps. <laughs> Step one, Eight Botox. of them are a surgeon center in my actual home. <laughs> She's like, this little spherical ball, you yes. just... Uh, Did you just know like, that's like one of the rumors is that they have a surgery center in, in her home? Stop. That they all go to? Mm-hmm. Oh, because they don't want to be seen coming mm-hmm. out of one in public. Mm-hmm. Oh. when they, It's like a recovery I mean, thing too, probably. I ultimate rich I bitch. actually yeah. think it's probably it's, true. Because they're oh, never seen it. and they're doing shit 24-7. One of them's like, hey, take one for the team. Put put an underground center. <laughs> we'll invest. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Honestly, if I was Kim K level, I would just get a lymphatic drainage massage every single day. hundred like, percent. I mean, literally, she li- <laughs> I would want my face massaged every single day. I was day. thinking about that, though. When I was like my <laughs> fantasizing my dream life, I was like, okay, getting up, getting a massage. And then I was like, in my dream life a little bit longer, I'm like, okay, I'm sick of massages. I'm like, no more. Don't touch me. <laughs> and then I was like, and then all my staff, I was like, staff is no longer here. We have I'm a alone. day, no staff. Yeah, literally, I was like, I'm alone. <laughs> I would just train my staff to give me massages. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> you want to work here? Yeah. Here's the special <laughs> place. He's like, I'm a chef. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do this. You're like, but you're hot. Get yeah. in the room. <laughs> <laughs> that works. So zinc is the mineral. It's back to sunscreen. So zinc is the mineral in sunscreen mm-hmm. that is important for people to look. And zinc is natural. And then there's chemicals that people want to look out for. So mm-hmm. just being mindful of looking for mostly zinc. What was the second one? Titanium. Titanium. Mm-hmm. Anything Zinc. that's not zinc or titanium is okay. a chemical sunscreen. Okay. And mineral is the same thing as physical. So that's the zinc and the titanium. Okay. okay. Mineral and physical, same thing. That's why it's better okay. protection too. It's literally giving your face a shield that reflects mm. back the sun's rays wow. rather than trying to like mitigate them in some chemical byproducts way with wow. the chemical ones. So wow. zinc is always best, especially for the face. Yeah. Face, neck, chest, zinc only. Yeah, I've noticed it was like when I was younger, when I would be tan, it was like cute. And lately, if I get too much sun, I'm like, oh, wow. It does not look <laughs> looks, the same when I was 16 not, years old nope. baking on the beach. Look the same. <laughs> no. Nope. It is like every indent is just deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wow, being tan is not cute for the face anymore. (laughs) Tanning lotion everywhere on my body. Um, I want to talk a little bit about just the to go deeper on the pore clogging. So you're talking a lot about pore clogging, but are the pores then supposed to be completely empty? Or what is the balance of of them? Because if we're talking about pores being clogged, is it they're clogged with something that is foreign to them naturally? Like, what's that? Great question. It's clogged with things, mainly oil substances that are thicker than our natural oil. Our okay. natural sebum is actually pretty thin. And it's if it's in your finger, like when I do extractions, I literally show people their own oil versus an oil from a product that's in their pores because it looks totally different. So if you're doing extractions on someone and um, it's just like their own natural oil and skin protein, it'll be white and it'll smush away really easily. Mm-hmm. Like you just rub it and it like disappears. And then if there's a pore clogging ingredient, it will form like an orange ball of wax inside their yes. pore oh, because yeah. it's too thick. It's just thicker than our natural oil. So our natural excretion process, like our sweating, we can't sweat it out because it's like too heavy. Like we don't have mm-hmm. enough force in our sweat to yeah. push it out because it's too heavy and, and too clogging. So it stays in the pore. It oxidizes and changes color and it makes like an orange ball of wax. So that's how you can tell. A lot of people are like, I pull these out all the time. It's from products. Whoa. Hmm. But the pores, I mean, your pores, there's other stuff that you can put on that doesn't necessarily clog them up that's safe. Like, for example, some oils are totally fine. Like hemp oil is safe. Rosehip oil is safe. They're just some oils are really, really thick, like coconut oil. And that one is just too thick in relation to our natural oil. Hmm. So that's the deal with the pore cloggers. I've had to uh, note 
and I didn't realize before, but like when I'm putting in my hair too. Mm -hmm. So like I would get kind of like these little breakouts on my neck sometimes, couldn't see them. So I would just like kind of feel them when I felt them. But like conditioner. That's the worst. Because like, if you think it, it's meant to like do a thick coating on your hair. And so it's going to be really, really thick naturally. So you're going to break out more on your sleep side, just like you said, around your hairline or your neckline right. or on your back, like where your hair is naturally laying when it's down or sweating. Mm -hmm. Is that with the, like the heavy silicone conditioners? Silicone isn't the main. It's mainly that. shea butter yeah. and isopropyl myristate and coconut oil. Those are the main things that get and, in conditioners. Oh, and shea like, butter is huge. Um, wheat protein too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one in hair conditioners. Oh. Yeah. And it's like wheat germ oil um, and wheat protein. And someone who's highly, highly allergic to gluten will actually get additional like breakouts and inflammation on their scalp from that. Why would they put wheat in conditioner. It's like a thickener. It's like a yeah. protein. Wheat protein. Yeah, like, hey. yeah. Because they, they have some. extra. It's that's the, why. Yeah. It's corn, the West. Corn and literally, wheat. Literally. They, they're they like, we got, farmers are like, we got extra corn. The government's yeah. like, we'll corn buy it. Corn and wheat and yeah, everything. Like, I've been seeing a ton of corn products and hair products lately, too. Oh, gross. You see it in the, the GMO stuff because they just have a ton me. of it. Yeah. And they got to find a way to sell it. Who's That's king of corn and freaking doing this shit? It's everywhere in like every form now. Um, But I find with hair care, Natural hair care doesn't work for me. Yeah, dude. No, same. Same. So I tried. Yeah, I just really try to hard. be mindful of like we all get our hair colored. Yeah, like, I mean, this is what I say when people ask me like, "Are you 100 percent non toxic with everything?" I was like, <gasps> "Everything except hair care." And I go clean. I go cleaner with hair care. Mm -hmm. It's just not 100 yeah. percent. Like there's still chemicals in it because I need it to do its work. I'm spending so much money yeah. on my hair, and like I'm not putting things directly on my scalp either. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I definitely do hair care that's like for color safe. I like Orbe. And, I, I love that, yeah. that brand. I love Orbe. Yeah, their shampoo like, well, is for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that and I like DP Hue a mm -hmm. ton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the that. apple cider vinegar rinse from them. I'm, I'm obsessed, obsessed with it. Yeah, it they makes your hair so shiny. And is so that for cool. blondes? Uh, yeah. Also, yeah, blondes, and they also have dark hair too. Okay. So they have all these like amazing gloss treatments that'll help preserve the color of your hair. I'm okay. obsessed, and they are Ooh. on the cleaner side. It's kind of like. A little on the same lines as, as clear stem, how like we don't have any like no hormone disruptors, mm -hmm. all of that, but we still have like things that do active work mm -hmm. in skincare. It's like similar ethos in, in that concept. Yeah. I'd love to talk about lifestyle. So we're talking about products. Um, would love to talk about like nutrition, whether it's like stress management, just things that we can do to basically make sure our skin as is as healthy as possible. Um, I feel like it's, it varies between people with acne prone skin and not, but generally at a high level, like what are you recommending to people to stay away from or eat more of? Uh, for lifestyle, it's mm, lifestyle. In terms of diet, you want to avoid, there's a couple of foods that will always trigger acne and that are just terrible for aging in general. Dairy is one of them. Whey protein is number one. Like avoid that at all Whoa. costs. Like whey protein is, it has such an insulin, uh, insulinogenic effect because the types of hormones that are in it. So it's terrible for the skin and it just creates a cascade of inflammation. And a lot of guys go, they start wanting to bulk up at the gym. So they get a protein shake. It's always whey uh -huh. and it can backfire really bad on the fellas too. Cause it'll just give them like insane, you know, that like bodybuilder acne that's like mm -hmm. really intense. Like a lot of it's from whey, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it's in a lot of different products too. So you just kind of have to be on the lookout for that. Eggs are another one that's a little controversial because we've been taught that egg whites are like the healthiest thing ever. Most people, when they get their food sensitivity test done, come back highly reactive to egg whites specifically. Um, the protein in them is called albumin and it's notoriously hard to digest. So it can uh, inflame our lymphatic system, which then if you're inflaming your lymphatic system, which is like one of your core immune functions, then it's just going to have a really bad cascade effect on the rest of the body. So eggs can be a huge one for people to avoid if they're having, especially if they're having them more than like once a week. Mm -hmm. I just eat the yolk, but what it... What? You eat the yolk, no white? Mm -hmm. Same. I do that Same too. Same girl, <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah. like the most you delicious murder. part. I put it in my... <laughs> Cool. Smoothie, yeah. You put it in your smoothie. Raw, raw egg is the mm -hmm. best. Like even if you, if you like cooked eggs, like cook it so it's like the soft boil or the soft scramble. It's like the healthy. Super good for the brain. <laughs> it's it's great for, right yeah. now. <laughs> Can you tell us why? Like why? Well, that the egg white protein mm -hmm. is albumin, and it's uh, very hard to digest but for the, a lot of people. The yolk. Oh, oh the egg. yolk doesn't. The yolk has all the nutrition yeah. anyway. That's where all the good stuff is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Other other things in terms of lifestyle, um, 
diet. So definitely dairy and eggs, sugar. Everyone kind of knows sugar. Mm -hmm. Um, thing I always talk to you about my, my clients when I see them is what they're having for their first meal. Because when you wake up, no matter when you eat your first meal, whatever you put in your body first is going to have a really strong impact on your system. So making sure that it's at least half protein is like the simplest guideline to help control a blood, a blood sugar spike. Mm -hmm. Cause if you have something like say an acai bowl, acai bowls are ice cream with the perks. best <laughs> my favorite thing <laughs> have some turkey slices first yeah, but, so your but blood I make sugar half bowl nut butter so it balances it out there you go so good. that is actually better than just having it mm -hmm. on its own but yeah i'm um, trying to aim for your meals being like a third to a half protein it's gonna be a good framework for someone who if they don't know anything else if they just do that they won't get as much of a sugar spike inflammation situation. Mm -hmm. Other parts of lifestyle, it's finding how can we just calm our body down? Like we're all going a million miles a minute. Our schedules are packed. We have a hard time finding time for everything. We're always in a rush. And that's keeping us in this really high level of stress. I mean, if you ever got like, Chris, you just went to Italy. Like how slow paced and relaxing is it over there? And then when you came back, it was like you felt probably like the intense energy of being back in LA. Like Unwell. always yeah. needing to do things like schedules back going. There's a lot of other countries. Just I was like looking for like, farms. Yeah. I was like, I, I think I'm going to move to this farm in Tarzana. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we, we get so comfortable with how high of stress we live our lives in that we forget what it's like to slow down until we do some traveling in an area where it is slower or go on like a relaxing retreat, something like that, where we get kind of a shock to our system of how, how intense it always is. But when we're always in this high level of stress, our bodies are constantly inflamed. And you hear the word like anti-inflammatory thrown around so much. A question we get all the time, it's like, okay, like what, like, what is it? Like, what is it? What do you mean? Like anti-inflammatory be inflamed when you're constantly inflamed. It means your body's constantly in a stress state. So you're going to, your body, your skin's going to be really stressed, which means you're going to break out because acne is also an inflammatory condition. Um, you're going to get sick because your immune system is suppressed whenever your stress levels are high and inflammation is high. Um, you're going to have a really hard time losing weight because when your body is stressed, it holds on to fat. And so it's, it's basically everything we want. Like we want to feel good every day. We want to have energy. We want our immune systems high. We want our skin to look great, but it's really just about feeling good every day. So it's getting those stress levels down. Some simple ways to do that is removing things that are really inflammatory, like the ones we can control. So it's, I mean, it's getting enough sleep <laughs> that's going to lower inflammation. It's helping, it's removing inflammatory oils. So anytime we, we can't really control it at a restaurant, understood. But if you're buying anything packaged, it's flipping it over. Does it have canola oil, vegetable oil, soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower, sunflower, oil. sunflower oil, all those really inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So just choosing to look for something else that has an olive oil, avocado, or coconut oil instead and avoiding those as much as possible. And again, it's not getting stressed if you're having a couple of chips and it does have it in it. It's just paying attention to what you're fueling your body with on a daily basis it's also looking at your workouts. Um, I, I mean, I know I was victim of this, of constantly doing high intensity workouts because I thought it's the only way I could feel fit and look good. Mm -hmm. And then actually when I started slowing down is when I loved my body the best. Mm -hmm. When I switched to walking and Pilates and I love weights, but slower. Like I would throw on a podcast, not like this intense music while doing weights. Mm -hmm. And I breathe and walk in between. So when we're doing these high cardio workouts, we're keeping our bodies in a stress state. And it actually, um, it can inflame our skin a ton, but also actually help us struggle with losing weight if the purpose of doing these high intensity is um, to lose weight for whatever, like really whatever the purpose is. But switching to something lower intensity actually relaxes your body. And so it's just like, what are these little things we can do to remove all the inflammation? Because our lives are still really busy. Mm -hmm. and we can, we can only try so hard to like navigate our schedule, but it's finding a little time to slow down and then just focusing on those foods where you feel really good after eating them and paying attention to the foods where you feel really crappy eating them and just being aware of that. It's like, you know, if you know you want a slice of pizza, like get excited about it. Cause it's like, Ooh, I'm treating myself. I want a mm -hmm. slice of pizza, but try not to order it. Cause it's like, Oh, I like, I'm so tired. I have nothing else to eat. I'm going to eat this pizza. And I'm going to feel like mm -hmm. crap after like save those indulgent foods for when you get excited about it and focus on all the other times, like really nourishing your body. Mm -hmm. It's all about like the intention, yes. you know, yeah. Yes. if you're working out hard cause you want, cause you hate your body, mm -hmm. then your body will continue to like hate you back. If you're eating the pizza cause you hate yourself, mm -hmm. 
you know, the result will always be the negative rather than being like, oh, I fucking want this pizza. Can't wait. I'm working out this way because I love it. <clears throat> I'm watching this from research studies on these like bodybuilders and lifters where they were doing a bunch of hit workouts for their prep training. And then they were also just walking and lifting. And they actually were able to get a lower to a lower body percent body fat percentage when they were just walking and they're lifting instead of doing hit and lifting because they were able to stay in the fat burning zone when they're walking rather than being in the carbohydrate burning zone. Yes. So when you get in the carbohydrate burning zone within hit, that means you get more hungry after. Obviously, it can lead to fat loss, but you oftentimes are wanting to eat a lot more because you're wanting to res- like restore the carbohydrate reserves mm-hmm. that you just burnt off. And it was really interesting because it was like, I've been just reading more and more and seeing more and more in my life too of the importance of walking and yes. just loving yeah. walking. Even like, you know, going to Europe, going to Italy, yeah. we were both in Italy. I mean, no one's going to Barry's <laughs> yeah, or there the was, gym. There's or, no gym. They're you, they they walk, they, they're bike riding, mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're having swimming. sex all the time. Having <laughs> sex all the time. <laughs> Actually, <though. laughs> You Which know, is just sex exercise. Yeah. Let's and talk more about that. It's you're so not good for you. anyone who is incredibly overweight, which no. is not the only point of yeah. exercise, but it was just very interesting Everyone to observe. Everyone looks really healthy. Yeah. Over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's also the stress level, I think, is a huge yeah. piece mm-hmm. of that. But I also wanted to touch on the oil piece because I have a theory that like there's certain campaigns for certain oils. Like I feel as though canola oil was used a ton, mm-hmm. uh, like maybe five, 10 years ago. Yeah. Now it's sunflower oil. Mm-hmm. So like, what is the next bad oil that's going to be used, but then kind of touted as, oh, this is the better alternative. Cause there was yeah. a time where I thought sunflower oil Same. Yeah. was good. Yeah, I was like, like, yay, I love flowers. flowers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, almost like sunflower sugar, butter where they're like, okay, use Splenda. Okay. Use Stevia. Okay. Use Agave, okay, that's like agave, baby. They just oh keep bringing us along the train, mm-hmm. and, then and we all know about it. the real issue. Well, yeah. I, like, I think it's like a, a pro, think of it like a product launch. Uh-huh. Like a company comes up with some new way to create a new thing that matches what society doesn't want at the time, like calories uh-huh. from sugar. Uh-huh. So, like, great, we're gonna do this thing that matches that, but gives them no calories, and then they do like a whole PR thing around it. Yeah, great, some stat pay for some studies on it. They're like, oh, nine out of 10 people said it tastes better than sugar. Like, you know, they create some marketing yeah. buzz around it. And then it's just like a product launch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then actual research comes out afterwards. It's like, hmm, here's actually the long-term <laughs> Do effects. you remember mm-hmm. Olestra? Yes. No, was what like, is Olestra? Dude, those chips where like it <laughs> had the fat, but it didn't absorb. So everyone oh, yeah, it was, was no like fat leaking. chips. Everyone was like shitting their pants. <laughs> everyone was, like, they had yes. to do like a like a, a total recall Wait, of the product. Wait, Olestra is the yes. product it was, name? It was called Olestra. And they had chips. It was like different... So it was like, I think it was Frito-Lay had bought a Lestra technology or something, but it okay. basically made everything fat-free. And so people were just eating their fucking faces <laughs> off of this fat-free chips <laughs> and these like fat-free stuff. And then they were just like shitting their brains like, out. It was, it was like leaking. Yes. It was with, so the oil, yes. they basically made the oil so that it couldn't be absorbed and that's how it was fat-free, but yeah. basically yeah. just le- out leaked body. out of your butthole. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Cool. Here's my thing. <laughs> Our body is like, can you stop trying to trick me? Yes. <laughs> like, just please. <laughs> Here's my thing. There's literally no quick fixes. So we're coming out with all these new 100%. sugar alternatives to avoid sugar. Honestly, when people ask me about sugar all the time, they're like, oh, you must be like anti-sugar. I'm like, actually, I'm a little more anti-sugar alternative. Yes. Because they're destroying oh. our gut health, our digestive yeah. system. They're also like... Some are some are a couple hundred times sweeter, so it's actually ruining our taste bud. I'm like, I would rather someone eat small amounts of stuff with cane sugar and coconut sugar because also those do have nutrients in it. There's some zinc, some selenium, some magnesium. So if you're having some organic cane sugar or coconut sugar, it's in small amounts. Like, would much rather have that than something that has, like, literally I've seen this has stevia and monk fruit in it mm-hmm. and erythritol in it, and then also sugar. And I'm mm-hmm. like, what? So like. Just keep in mind when all these new things and quick fixes coming out, just come back to basics because our bodies are so old. They can't adjust for all these new quick fixes. So let's go back to like the oils we love, the coconut, the avocado, the olive oil, and then the real sugars that grow in nature. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it's, it's okay. And just have that. And I feel like you're so much more satisfied when you're like having the thing. Yeah. Instead of like dancing the around real, it. yeah, yes. you know, that's mm-hmm. what I'll notice. I'm like, I just ate 12 like of the diet bars, and I'm like, if I would have had just like 
the real McCoy, mm -hmm. which I've said twice in the past two days. We still don't know who McCoy is. We still don't know where this means, but the real McCoy. If I have the real thing, then I'm so much more satisfied. Yes. There's that brain thing, too, where you're like, this is a treat. This is a, you know, I'm going to enjoy this. And you kind of slow down. You take it in rather than when you're avoiding all the things and you're eating everything except for the thing that you actually want. Well, I yeah. think it's like what you said with the intention behind it. Because mm -hmm. your intention when you're eating some yeah. like diet fake bar is to avoid enjoying the real thing so yeah. it's like it like the energy the energetic connection to that piece of food was never substantial anyway mm -hmm. yeah 100 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah how we pick out our food and everything i feel like is so important like i never instacart vegetables or fruit ever i like to go and like it pick them up look at them yes be like i'm gonna eat you later <laughs> and then like when you do mm -hmm. it's like a more nurturing it's like a, yeah. it's almost like you know modern day hunting and gathering yes where it's like, like an eight, ah, this an looks right this looks nice yeah Wow. Completely. Our That's brains a good one. still need that process. Like we try to avoid it so much and it's so important to the entire way we digest food from the picking out the food to the making the food to the sitting down to the chewing it. It's like all part of the same process and we forget that because we're just in such a hurry and that's what they do in wow. europe they still respect yeah. their food in a way that keeps them super healthy that's yes. cool and they celebrate mind. eating in a way like you no one's on their phone at the family yes. dinner table that's not a thing yes mm -hmm. if you ask for the check they're like insulted mm -hmm. they're like yeah. enjoy mm -hmm. just keep going like, you know just what i relax. love yeah. they don't have to go coffee yeah. yeah you have to sit down and have a conversation mm -hmm. with someone over coffee yeah. it's the best that's so true yeah. One time we were in France with my family and my dad, we were at this like dinner with a group. It was like a four hour dinner. And my dad's like, yeah, three hours I could do. Four hours. Four hours I'm out. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, it's just too long. <laughs> like, I literally know exactly. But think about like the digestion period where you're like, you I think, have a course, yes. you chill, you talk. Da, 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 and then like later you can walk. Yes. You know, walk I think up. it's a lot the EMFs too. Like the yeah. amount of. EMF 5G stuff around uh -huh. here that's like zzz, yeah, just I mean, like 24 7. Just ranging. And mm -hmm. there it's just like none of that. It's and the soil quality is so much better. Like it's just, <clears throat> it's so, so beautiful. Okay, so we're all going to go split a villa yeah. and <laughs> yeah, I'm literally Capri thinking next year. About it, right? I'm, I'm down. Mm -hmm. Can we do like almost 30 clear stem week retreat? And just I would <laughs> love that. <laughs> Try to <Dude>, literally. <laughs> yeah, to really Como. Let's, just go, let's just go work from out there. I would. I was thinking about it. I'm like, I would literally love to do that. Yeah. I don't know why I'm not. Like I could. Danielle and I keep talking about I think doing I never it. Really we keep talking, talking about, about it. But then we year. always have like some thing and then summer just back. disappears yeah, <laughs> yeah summer's almost over yeah. i am planning our um yoga retreat for december, december. so we did this oh, last yes. year we did like a co we did a co-founder retreat in, in mexico and we did a yoga retreat and oh my gosh we didn't drink alcohol the whole time the food was so clean mm. we did yoga twice a day but then swam. we got swam then we got work done too like it was such a good reboot yeah. for us like we need those little sorry reboots. bitch sorry bitch you're coming you gotta come <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would love to do that. I would love to do that. So what about alcohol with skin? In moderation. So <laughs> you're like, we like it, yeah. so it's okay. <laughs> alcohol just like doesn't agree with me yeah. at all. Um the sugar and I like, don't think it's supposed to agree with it you. Know. Some people it just like doesn't affect that much, mm -hmm. but like you know there's actually eight percent of people or there's yeah, a small population, that? Andrew. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I caught Hubie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew Gibberman was talking about there's a small percentage of the population that actually gets like a euphoric effect from drinking. They actually feel like really high and happy and feel really, really good. But most people feel depressed. Interesting. I mean, yeah. it does. The uh, In relation to skin, it ages you so much faster. I mean, think of even like a night of having one or two drinks and you like even just one and you wake up the next morning, you see a little more lines, yes. a little more indents, a little more swollen. So it ages you faster. And since it causes a lot of inflammation, again, it's going to aggravate acne in certain ways too. And that's and then that's not even including any fillers you have. Mm -hmm. Like if you like sugary drinks or, you know, whatever you like, it's all those additional things that are also weighing into it. Mm -hmm. uh, wine has become a thing that a lot of women develop sensitivities to, the tannins, the mm -hmm. sulfites, and then all, this, all the shit that they put in it's wine. Disgusting. They don't have to, their label doesn't have to include sugar or dyes or anything else. So they, a lot of they these manufacturers go nuts. Yeah, yeah. they use, so not all wine is gluten-free and vegan. Yeah. Like there's eggshells in it. There's fish, fish byproducts. Mm -hmm. There's wheat byproducts. Oh. Well, then there's dyes too. There's, there's like mega purple, liquid smoke, and then there's just a ton of sugar. Yeah. So it's, 
we have like a special way of finding like if we want to have wine like the exact wine where we know it's really clean mm-hmm. what um, brand yeah so if you don't want to go for a brand actually uh, we're talking about Italy mm-hmm. so if you head to the Italian wine section mm-hmm. at any grocery store um, you look for it's a little label that up by the cork it says either DOC or DOCG on it and it's Italian's um, it, sorry Italy's regulatory commission and it's basically in the simplest form it's telling you there's nothing that shouldn't be added to wine added in this wow. so like you know when you go to Italy and you That's have wine you one. feel great it's wow. like yeah so it's like the purest like the way wine should be made um there's other like newer brands and stuff coming out but I I just really think like Italy knows their wine more than America does <laughs> like mm-hmm. that's how I feel and so I'm like they know they know how to do it right I'm gonna trust that so I pretty much just buy Italian wine or um the region of Bordeaux so Bordeaux mm-hmm. wine really really strict they won't add anything either so there are certain mm-hmm. regions in Europe that are insanely, insanely strict. So just knowing those and buying within. Mm. I like sake. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, if I love I'll go sake. to a barbecue that's BYOB <laughs> and I'll show up with sake. She wears like, sake in that's Nashville. Hilarious. And I was like, hell yeah. I actually do I so really glad like that. Sake. I had it on the menu. Okay, it's made of rice. Rice yeah. is easy to digest. Yeah. And it doesn't have wow. the tannins or the sulfites. So you feel fine. Like it's amazing. You can wake up I feeling have totally felt normal. Fine. What if that's sake? Yeah. Really? Well, because I feel like when we were it was drinking like sake, sake, it was like sake bombs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But there's in some like Ohio. Really good more sake, less bomb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I was living in New York, I broke out in this crazy rash. It wasn't a rash. I'll tell you in a second. But I was like, oh, maybe because I was drinking so much. I was like, maybe I'm allergic to alcohol. So I switched to sake because I was like, this is not like a grain alcohol. <laughs> Probably was an alcoholic. You were like, maybe I should take a break. You're like, gotta find something else. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You're like, so I started smoking crack. (laughs) Classic New York. Like, I I found out it was bed bugs, so it was not a skin (laughs) rash at all. Not so. I'm like drunk on sake. I'm like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Drunk on sake getting bit by bed bugs. <laughs> that was like my last few months in New York. It was the ultimate push out. It was a like, you I'm got done. It. Oh, no. itching, just here, feeling oh your pain god. right now. For like four or five months, I had bed bugs and didn't know it. Yeah. Jesus. Oh mm-hmm. my god. They were anyway. just fucking enjoying their life. <laughs> With the, um, okay, kind of rotating a little mm-hmm. bit. <laughs> <laughs> We're rotating a little bit. So we talked about eating good for the skin. We talked about lifestyle things. I want to talk about um, layering products. And then I want to talk a little bit about collagen. So let's talk about layering products first, because when we're talking about earlier, we're talking about sunscreen. So when would we we put on the sunscreen? Like what would be the process for someone in the morning if they're going out for the day for their skin routine and then their sunscreen and then their makeup if they're doing that. Totally. So I love skin routine and processes because things behave very differently uh, depending on how you layer them. So in the morning, I only like people to do like cleanse, protect, like cleanse, moisturize and protect. So if you were say using the clear sunline, for example, you'd be using the gentle clean cleanser in the morning. And then you can use either the cell renew serum, which is the stem cell serum that has the reishi and the hyaluronic acid and the uh, it has collagen derived stem cells in it so it's like skin food but it's in a hyaluronic base so it's a hydrating thing so you can cleanse apply that and then if you're dry you apply a moisturizer some people don't need a moisturizer mm-hmm. in the morning i know i don't because i'm very oily so you just cleanse maybe a serum and then your sunscreen and it can be as simple as that and then at night is when you do your corrective work aka your exfoliation so at night is when you do if you you take off your makeup with a gentle cleanser and then you can use a scrub And a lot of people don't, they're not educated on how to use scrubs properly. Using a scrub for like eight to 10 seconds, but like every other night is so much better than doing it just once a week for a minute. So I love your guys' scrub. Thank you. I use it on my whole body. Same. I keep mine in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for ingrown hairs. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's I exfoliate before I shave like my bikini area or anything else. Exfoliate like all the dead skin cells off and really prime it so you get a closer shave that way too. Yeah, love. Um, The biggest thing with exfoliation too is I was just talking to someone. She was like, you know, I exfoliate so much. Like I'm so like mad at my acne that I just like trying to scrub it off. Mm. That is not what an exfoliant is for. It's actually like it should be really gentle for the skin. So you actually like when you're – it's like 
how soft you touch and hold a baby almost is how you want to exfoliate because all the little beads mm-hmm. in it are going to do it themselves. So you be really gentle for your skin and you're not trying to scrub off the acne or breakouts or melasma in any way. You're actually just gently exfoliating off the dead skin cells and priming your skin, opening your pores so all the correctives can get in there and do their work. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like brushing your teeth. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. You're like, don't like fucking go crazy. Oh yeah, don't make your gums bleed. Like yeah. don't go aggressive. It's literally, yeah. <laughs> just be gentle. But I hate my teeth. <laughs> yeah. I feel- don't brush your teeth yeah. when you're pissed off so bad. <laughs> yeah. But it's so true. I mean, I remember those days. They say to do it with your so opposite sad. hand. Yes, I've been trying to do that. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. So if you're right handed, do it with your left. Because cool. it'll that. be gentle. You like stab your eye. Careful though, careful. Have to be me. You can't do anything with my right hand. You're like, in your mouth. <laughs> so yeah after you do a little bit of physical exfoliation then then you want to do your chemical exfoliation the word chemical shouldn't scare anyone by the way even water is a chemical but um our chemical exfoliation is a mandelic acid it's called clarity aka the yellow one <laughs> and it's a serum that dissolves the things that are in your pores so it's nicknamed our blackhead dissolver but it also has vitamin c in it so the acid actually is dissolving stuff that you don't want in your skin like whether it's like extra skin protein or extra oil or bacteria, it's dissolving all of that while allowing the vitamin C to penetrate better. Then there's also turmeric in it. So you want a corrective that's going to do a lot of work, but without making you more sun sensitive. This is why we don't like retinol. Retinol and like tretinoin, especially for acne, it's so aggressive Mm -hmm. that it just makes your skin kind of raw in a way that kind of backfires in the long run in terms of UV damage Mm -hmm. from that. So um, our serum, we love alpha hydroxy acid. So mandelic is what we chose, but then other people can use a salicylic or a glycolic. Basically anything in the AHA family is going to be a really good treatment serum at night. The thing with that, um, the most important layering thing to know when you're talking with an acid is to let it sit alone for at least 10 minutes. If you put something else on immediately after, you neutralize it, you get zero benefit. Whoa. So well, it's very important. So salicylic acid or glycolic acid... What anything in your guys's mandelic is yours? We yes, use mandelic. Yeah. It's like the Goldilocks of, of acids. Okay. Salicylic, okay. you can only really get in a two percent. Yeah. It's an FDA thing For and acne, really drying so. too. Yeah. yeah, it's more like using spot treatments a yeah. lot. Yeah. I, you know, I don't get that it's drying. I get that it's not strong enough, actually, mm-hmm. for acne. But it depends on the formula. Because yeah. f- usually what's drying in a formula will be, like, alcohols that it's sitting in. Yeah. 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 So a lot of salicylics can either be drying because they're made in, like, an astringent form yeah. or they're not strong enough to do anything. So then glycolic is nice for anti-aging, but it's more of a treatment room thing, in my opinion. It's not – you wouldn't want to use a glycolic every single day, most likely. Mandelic, you totally can. And you have to let it sit. Let it sit alone for wow. about 10 minutes. It can be more than that. You can put it on and go go chill, go cook, that. go do whatever. Um, it just needs time to dissolve the stuff that you don't want on your skin anymore. So it's dissolving melasma, dissolving clogged pores. It's dissolving scar tissue. It just needs a little time to do that. You don't rinse it off, though. I get a lot of people think they have to rinse it off. You don't. You just leave it alone, and then you layer your next step, which can be wow. just a moisturizer, or it can be another treatment serum like, like our Bounce Back Serum, the anti-wrinkle serum. So you would layer that after an acid after the acid has been like neutralized essentially by leaving it alone for a few minutes after an acid before a moisturizer yeah because yeah. when it's if you have two things that are two products that are hydrating in nature they can have different ingredients and different purposes but if they're both kind of hydrating you just layer thinnest to thickest Got it. so you would do a moisturizer As and then an oil step. Oh, you, if you were going to do an oil, you would do the oil after your moisturizer, or you can just mix you it with really. your yeah, moisturizer. Yeah, do like a drop or oh, two. Okay. Yeah, I prefer mm-hmm. cocktailing um, an oil and a moisturizer, okay. or you can get the squalane drops, like pure squalane. Mm-hmm. It's very similar to human oil. You can just cocktail that with your moisturizer and make a super illusion. Mm-hmm. Cool. So at night, you're going to want to cleanse. You're going to want to physically exfoliate, then chemically exfoliate weight, <laughs> and then you're going to treat with a collagen stem cell serum. Um, and then, or sorry, like protecting, and then we're going to moisturize, um, and like the moisturizer is basically going to seal everything in, just like keep it all in, lock it in. Be a glazed donut when you go to bed. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What about collagen? Does it work? Is it absorbed by the skin? So just if you were to put like collagen powder in a lotion, no, not going to do anything. It's not small enough for your body to, for your skin to use. We actually use collagen derived stem cell media. So what that means is that it's been, it's actual human tissue that's been donated for science, purified highly, and then broken down in a way where the collagen stem cell fiber can go in and be used by the skin to repair itself. So it's in what's called a bioavailable form. Wow. 
I have a product. It was like post-treatment kind of to use, like an actual, I don't know if it's pure collagen. I doubt it, but it's not like the bounce back. But is that kind of what you're talking about? I, I'm wondering if it's like, is sometimes, that a clogging? Sometimes they straight up put placenta. Like, <laughs> Whoa. But didn't that be nice? Kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, but that's I, I, I'm borderline. There's ethics that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. comes around with that, but, um, but yeah, there's. I just feel like a lot of brands are just like we're just going to throw collagen in everything, and I don't yeah. think they know that it doesn't absorb by the skin. So there's like very affordable grocery store brands that are like, hey, we're adding collagen to everything. Yeah, I mean, to food, it's easy to add. And yeah, there there is some benefit to topical skincare. No, it needs to be in a much smaller form. And there's a difference on the ingredient list when it just says collagen versus like collagen derived stem cell media. Wow. Yeah, because the stem cells are like, are what's doing and like all of ours ethically sourced every possible way from donated fat tissue. Yeah, of course. Um, but those are going to do the work. So it's the stem cells. And then in Bounce Back, which is why people love it so much, we not only have those stem cells, but we have peptides in it. And peptides is like the real anti-aging ingredient. It's little messenger proteins that tell your skin to repair itself. So from sun damage, from acne, from scar damage, you name it. But that's going to be like a big repair mechanism too. Yeah, I love Bounce so Back. Bounce Back is my favorite. So yes. I, I don't like Botox because I feel like it makes me look mean no matter what I do. So Bounce <laughs> Back, I made so Bounce Back specifically. <laughs> what? I need to pull pictures from when I was doing Botox oh, we consistently should. and me too. It's dude. crazy because we were I feel like we were on tour at some point. We were in there's, Dallas. There's, there's a there's, lot there's of There's an pictures. event in Dallas where my eyebrows are like this. <laughs> it like, happens to everyone. Mean. I, was like, I, I looked mean. I was like, give a little arch and I don't it was just like not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> unneeded like completely i've gotten both i always want to try it again i'm like maybe this time we'll hit the right pattern and then i go home and i microcurrent it out with my new face i love like, my new face yeah it's those the are the, i love those people need this new is psa face. psa if anyone <laughs> does botox don't do your microcurrent after because it's going to neutralize it that's amazing botox relaxes your muscle new face stimulates it yeah, but I feel so like you got to pick one or the that's other. That's why I like New Face because I'm mm-hmm. like the the concept of Botox at Botox at the high level of paralyzing or your muscle. I'm like, so wouldn't your muscle then no longer fire? Atrophy. Yes, atrophy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so then, because yeah. I've seen there's this woman I watch. She has really good like plastic surgery breakdowns of celebrities. So sometimes I just kind of like tap in and see what's mm-hmm. up. She gets tons of plastic surgery herself. She's very open about it. She wants to actually break the stigma, but I sometimes see like it's like the so much Botox that the, droopy, the droop, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, think about if, um, you get injured in any way and can't work out a muscle or you or if you've ever had a cast on and then you get cast taken off and everything is atrophied and it's loose and like skin's kind of sagging and it just looks really, I mean, I've gotten surgery. So I've looked like I had like a chicken wing, like yeah. it kind of just flops around. That's like, that's what happens when you're relaxing your muscles. Yeah. So it's actually really good to do things when we tighten our muscles because then it lifts things, it tightens them, it mm. pulls them up naturally. Mm-hmm. So that's why like, that's why we love the new face. Yeah. So it's working those muscles love to tighten face. everything naturally. Yeah. It's just, it's just, uh, but the new face, the, the stuff actually made me break out. Oh, I don't oh, break out. Oh, that shit what do you use? Out. Yeah, I just what do you use? Renew. Same. Your Cell Renew mm-hmm. Serum? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hyaluronic. Okay. Because, mm-hmm. so new face we're, we're talking about is a microcurrent device that's very small, but you can buy new face. There's like, like a mini one. It's like a conductor serum. That's Trinity and then a body and the, the serum that I have from them, it makes me break out because it's so thick. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's so thick. Yeah, you don't have to use that. I mean, you definitely don't want to put like an acid or anything, but like a cell renew, like it's really mm-hmm. like clean hyaluronic acids. I mean, sorry, yeah, hyaluronic acid, but mm-hmm. not like the acids we're talking about before. Like yes. the AJs. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I want to talk about supplementing and you have a new supplement that I'm loving. Um, and why is it so important that not only what's in it, but like that we're ingesting and not just topically. Love skin. this question. So you're talking about our supplement called Mind Body Skin, and we formulated this very carefully to be an alternative, a healthy alternative to Accutane, antibiotics, and spironolactone. So if you have acne of any kind, whether it's hormonal or, um, I mean, really any type of acne, you go to the dermatologist. Those are the three things that they put you on. For well, it'll be birth control too, but when that doesn't work, then they do antibiotics. They do spironolactone. If and when that doesn't work, then there's Accutane. And that's pretty much the only playbook in modern dermatology. Mm -hmm. And all of the areas that affect acne in the body are completely ignored, like uh, digestion, gut health, mood, like none of those things are talked about or addressed. 
doing the medication route. And in fact, the medications are highly toxic and can make the root cause of acne worse. Um, Kaylee and I both went through this. Um, I went through it more uh, more aggressively. I did Accutane three times and my acne still came right back. Wow. Um, did spironolactone, uh, everything in between. And your lips like fall off. And your ears too. Your ears are like dangling, like feeling skin. You get, <laughs> if you like wash your hands. hands. Boys, in high, boys in high school, they would be like mm. crust in everywhere. It's oh. very, your knuckles bleed like after you wash yeah. your hands. Like it's really intense. And it's the long-term Sad. effects are, are pretty devastating on the body, especially if the root cause was something digestion related. Think, Accutane makes it way worse. You're completely, oh. they're completely getting rid of the entire, entire, entire gut microbiome I believe. that with antibiotics yeah, yeah. With but antibiotics. accutane's terrible for your gut too basically all these medications are just destroying your your yeah. gut mm-hmm. liver and your mm-hmm. liver as well oh, yeah. and those are the two biggest areas that affect acne internally so at san diego acne clinic when i have a patient who comes in and i know there's something going on internal i know that they have ibs i know they're not pooping regularly like i know there's something going on internal um, i have a network of blood work specialists that look in all these corners and they always come back with the same issues. It's digestion, it's liver, or it's something to do with like um, like hormone processing of the liver, essentially. So it might be a hormonal thing, but tied to the liver. So I made we made this supplement. We formulated it in a way that addresses the most common causes in those same priorities. So this one has vitamin A in the form of retinal palmitate. So it's bioavailable. That means... So what vitamin A does for the skin is it just makes it less acne prone. It makes your skin cells shed more normally so they don't clump up in your pores as much in a nutshell. So it is really important. Then there's something called DIM that we put in there that helps with PMS symptoms and it helps to balance estrogen in the body and it helps your liver to process out toxic estrogens and other toxic things that it needs some support in eliminating. It also has B5, which helps to mitigate the testosterone related acne surges. Testosterone is like the biggest hormone that causes a hormonal acne flare up. That's why PMS is usually the worst time because our testosterone is higher. So the B5 really helps with that. It also helps with digestion. We also put digestive enzymes in there Mm -hmm. to help people break down protein better. And then the main thing that makes it totally different is something called 5-HTP, which is a serotonin builder. And it's also a bit of a new tropic. It's actually linked to like better cognitive function um, and better sleep and all the, you know, the hormone benefits that come with stress reduction and better sleep. So we put really good ratios of everything in this blend and it is changing lives. It's mm-hmm. been incredible to see like truly it, it makes me want to cry whenever we mm-hmm. read Literally. people reaching out. Like this is my like coming from a background in holistic nutrition and uh, being a huge part of our brand ethos is educating about the internal causes us you know owning a skincare brand and straight up saying skincare isn't going to be the only thing that fixes your skin if it's internal and so we've been trying to find a way like how can we help people also tackle the internal uh, triggers of acne while we're taking care of the externals with skincare and so we're so excited to make sure we're just hitting everything like gut health digestion liver support anti-inflammatory every, the mood support um hormone balancing support everything all in one and so this was just like so so much fun to formulate Mm -hmm. it's like just something we're so incredibly proud of because we want to give people the confidence to not have to run and get prescriptions there's a lot of people I was getting um, lunch with a friend yesterday and she was like, I just don't want to be on spironolactone anymore. I want to get pregnant soon. I'm just so scared to go off it. Like, it, I mean, Lindsay, you and I were talking about this. Like, as soon as we get a breakout or two, like, oh, is it going to happen again? Is it going to be really bad again? And it it creates that trigger of fear in us. And so giving people something that's going to support their body so well um, and, and release that fear and help them not run to the prescription medications that most people don't want to take. They just truly think there's no other option. Yeah, same thing with PCOS. PCOS mm-hmm. is really, really common and it's underdiagnosed and it can be the secret culprit for people. If you have like an irregular period um, or like really bad period symptoms when you do get it, um, a lot of people are PCO- have PCOS or are PCOS like leaning or prone to it. So, um, and that can create a ton of relentless acne. Like it's, it's insane. So we made this supplement to really help. Like that was our barometer. Could it help mm-hmm. someone with PCOS? Mm-hmm. Because they're the ones that are really hard to help mm-hmm. and it does. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's been great. I've only been taking it for a few weeks, um, but I've already noticed a difference because I had like a little summer breakout happening. And um, yeah, it's been really, really helpful. So I'm really excited for people to try that. Amazing. Taking all my notes. Um, 
I wanted to round out by talking about the fact that you two, as friends and business partners, do therapy therapy together. Mm-hmm. We do. We actually have an appointment today. We do. At three. Yeah. <laughs> we have our co-founder. He's like an executive executive coach. He's also yeah. a therapist. He's also um, has his own organization um, for he's he's like a man of many hats. He really is. He's he, best. Uh, how do I phrase this? Okay, so. The, I'm in a business group called EO and there's something called forum and there's a way t- you are tight knit with the entire group, but then you have a smaller group of like eight people and like you all talk about like your top 5% and bottom 5% of everything that's going on in your life. And then you can, um, you know, use that to just like get more emotionally intelligent with your work and like you figure out what needs to happen and you just get clarity on that. So he's trained in that method as well. And he brings that to us and to our company and to our entire team. He also scales, um, he helps to scale businesses. There's a way to, it's getting into the weeds here, but um, there's a way to have certain meetings and certain like you call them quarterly rocks and things Mm -hmm. like that. And it's just a way to organize your team in a cohesive way as you scale. Cause like once you have more than like five employees, like shit gets weird. Mm -hmm. Like you got to be really organized. You have to have a very strong purpose for every meeting you have. Like everyone's time is extremely valuable. So he's got a lot of training in how to scale businesses and, and help the co-founders navigate the emotional side of things as these things come up. Because everything's very, very heavy when you're growing really fast and when every decision is so heavily weighted. And then he helps us with anything we need with our interpersonal Mm -hmm. communication. And then sometimes it's just like, hey, everything's going great. Let's plan our team retreat. Yeah, I mean, what I love most about it is, I mean, co-founder relationship is like any other relationship, if not more intense, because not only are we like talking all day every day but we both have a business together we both have separate lives that also intertwine so it's just like life stuff that happens and not letting it affect the business or our relationship anyway and so we love talking that out with him like if any of us like if we're struggling at all in life and not letting it affect the business and how do we manage that communication how do danielle and i manage communication as we're making like as clearstem grows there's a lot more difficult decisions and like higher risk decisions and making sure we like our one year, three year, five year, 10 year goal is on par. So we're making decisions that match that together and we're not drifting apart during it. Just like Mm -hmm. as, I mean, any other relationship, even like, um, you know, with a boyfriend or a fiance or a husband and, um, as you're, as you're growing in a relationship, making sure you're staying on the same page and your goals are still aligned and you're communicating properly. Cause we all, we all give information and receive it so differently. We hear things so differently. And so that's something that like over a year ago, Danielle and I worked really hard on is it's, we were both saying the same thing, but we are hearing things very differently. And so he taught us how to communicate in the way that we each needed to hear in order to understand what the other person was communicating. And that was life-changing for our relationship is incredible and now Danielle Danielle and I know how to do that without him and now sometimes we need that support sometimes for big decisions but sometimes for decisions around employees about how we handle certain situations Mm -hmm. hiring firing um all of that it's so important definitely and then just I think everyone should everyone should have a therapist (laughs) if you have a pulse and you had a childhood um (laughs) But like understanding our triggers too, because there's certain things that scare, that create fear in Kaylee that wouldn't have crossed my mind. And then other things that I'm hyper aware of that she's like, oh, that's not a thing, you know, but it's all just perception Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just understand. And then you're like, oh, that does make sense. I totally see why you'd feel that way based on your experiences. I'm going to be sensitive to that now. And then it just like unlocks like the next level of like growth Mm -hmm. together. Yes. It allows you to be so much more compassionate around those certain areas. Like now I know like really certain triggers that stress Danielle Mm -hmm. out. So I know how to be really compassionate or really encouraging around that time. Like when I know that she's stressed out about something going on, like how can I be additional support? Um, How can I be encouraging around this instead of it creating more conflict? Because sometimes when one person's stressed out, another person gets stressed out and no one Mm -hmm. can dip in to help the other person and it creates distance and conflict. So how do like now we know like when each of us needs to step in and kind of grab that other person it's like all right we got this and I can literally say I need a pep talk yeah yeah <laughs> I need a peptide and a pep talk yeah yeah. Yes. yeah that's such an important energetic to be able to be 
in relationship with someone and not both get hype. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, okay, they're hype. And then you're kind of matching energy yeah, or you're just sort of, you know, being able to co-regulate. So it's like, okay, they're hype. I'm going to be chill, you know, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. What's an example of the communication piece where you guys were saying the same thing, but you weren't really hearing each other? I'm trying to think a lot of this is going like we learned a lot of this probably a year and a half ago as we went through like weeks and weeks of um, talking about things. Um, I think it was around marketing stuff. Yeah. Because you're yeah. you're a genius marketing brain in a way where I'm like, well, what's the ROI? What do we like? Because mm-hmm. I'm in charge of the money. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the eternal struggle between sales and finance in Literally, every company. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. yeah. Danielle Facts. manages the finances. I lead the marketing team. Facts. And so it's also like understanding like how many finances do we have? To, like how flexible can we be this month mm-hmm. or for the next month? Or honestly, do we have a shit ton of inventory checks to write mm-hmm. where it all has to go towards that? Because we're planning so many months with supply chain planning an absurd amount of months in advance so do we have to pull back on marketing and us constantly communicating to know where each of us are at so I'm not making marketing decisions and Danielle's like "Mm, I gotta write a bunch of checks over here or we're gonna have nothing to market (laughs) and then like yeah and vice versa so it's a lot of like communicating like with our departments that like Danielle and I each lead and knowing where we're at yeah and it also like throws another element of whimsy I'll call it when we don't really have a set marketing budget like where we don't operate in a way where it's like this was our q1 budget this and that like you have to do that Mm -hmm. when you're vc funded because it's all about the numbers and the reports Mm -hmm. and the excel and all the things we don't do that I'm like the way I look at things the way and the way we look at things is if something is a good idea we'll try we'll make it happen budget doesn't quite matter because this opportunity is here and we're going to assess it being here and now and that can create a lot of um, uncertainty especially when you're being invited to and at the table doing a lot of different things and everyone wants to collab and there's just like so much to do. So we just have to really dial in like with our coach, like, okay, how do we ascertain the value of these things? What's the soft value? What's the repurposing value? What's the brand value? Because like, especially with brand awareness, it can just be a ton of money going up into the sky and you have no clue where it went. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the thing with marketing. It's hard to tell. It's like, sometimes it's accumulation of everything. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, it hit there, hit there, hit there. It mm-hmm. saw them. They saw it seven times because you have to see it so many times before you do it. I think it. it's like 12 now. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's one second. It's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, that's really beautiful. Yeah. I yeah. think the coach thing is huge too. And obviously we very much relate to that. And it's beautiful to kind of rewrite the normalized story around female relationships and around female partnerships and especially in business. And I really relate too to, I'm like a very much like, not a, I'm not very much a numbers person, but I'm very much that big picture. Like I very, I like to know, but we're not super strict on things. We're like, okay, if we want to make it happen, we'll make it happen. We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. We're not like, this is what our numbers were then. This is, it kind of just like ebbs and flows with what we're sort of working with. And I think yeah. that's like the feminine yes. flow of yes. things trust. that I really appreciate. Yeah. It's like the trust in what you don't know yet, but yeah. knowing that, you know, kind of the core of, the idea or of the strategy is really strong and an integrity. And I think that, yeah, that's why I love kind of rounding out the conversation here because there are so many women who are either are entrepreneurs or are in or a part of teams where there's so much of the masculine, which is so needed, Mm -hmm. so, so needed. The structure is so needed, but there's kind of this fear of the flow and of like the Mm -hmm. trusting and experimentation and all of that. So I just love to hear that. Thank you. Love it. Yeah, we love our coach. We do. He's a big South African teddy bear. Aww. And we, we do a circle of acknowledgement after every call. Mm-hmm. What's that? Where we, I would literally say, Krista, I acknowledge you for wearing amazing outfits and for mm. lighting up the room and for bringing mm-hmm. beverages to your guests yes. that they really, really wanted and for making people feel welcome. Like love that. that would be like my acknowledgement mm-hmm. of like our recent interaction. Oh my God. Yeah. You know what's <laughs> like, funny when you said that? I was like, lame. And then you acknowledged me and I was like, this is dope. <laughs> <laughs> Feel seen. <laughs> like, like, we're doing this all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You just acknowledge, you just, you just see someone, you acknowledge them and you acknowledge oh, what they, that. what they mean to you and what they've brought. And especially if you're talking about a certain project, like I acknowledge that you brought, like Kaylee helped plan this entire event that we just did in Nashville. I was like, thank you for organizing it, for creating the vision for it, for executing it Mm -hmm. and for helping it go off without a hitch. I love love that. I think that'd be good with the team too. Yes. Because yeah. I feel like we're trying to do that. Now Lindsay yes. needs one. Lindsay. Yes. Yes, <laughs> please. I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> Lindsay, I acknowledge you. Every time I see or talk to you, you are just 
you you want to know about my life. Like we don't mm-hmm. even see each other that often. And I can see that you're genuinely so interested of what's going on and truly bring so much kindness, light and truly just sunshine. Like you're mm-hmm. always just such a fun person to talk to and interact with. And it just I feel how genuine your heart is in every way. Thank and so you just beam genuine. positivity, genuineness and kindness. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I receive. Great. Truly receive. Catch me on a, a moody day. Yeah. Maybe catch, me on a ge- catch me on a Gemini moon day. <laughs> but I learned that I have to ride the wave. Mm-hmm. Like I can't yeah. fake. I can't when I'm in a quote mood or kind of feeling mm-hmm. a low, I have to like be there mm-hmm. and not fake it. Cause the faking it is kind of the dissonance that yes. like makes me feel like mm-hmm. so you have to it's very feel even when it's not the best of energy, you just got to feel it and mm-hmm. ride it through. It'll fade so much faster mm-hmm. when you're just like, except, you know, we do not do this all the time. We not, we tell each other again, communicate when one of us just is in a mood that day. And it's like, Hey, I just like, I woke up. I don't feel that good. I just, I genuinely, I don't feel that happy. So I'm going to work really hard today, but my energy levels and like peppiness just might not be there. And it's Mm -hmm. not about you. Like, I'm not mad about anything. I'm Mm -hmm. fine. I'm just like not really feeling good today. So I know I'll wake up feeling probably better tomorrow. It's just not my day. And I know on those days to order you Thai food. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Because we just want to create assumptions in anyone else's head. You don't want to get mad at you. Like then the stories just start spiraling. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. I love, I love the mirrors of like not only female friendships, Mm -hmm. but relationships and business too and just kind of that model it's it's good to be around and I feel like we do that for other people too so it's just nice to well you guys exemplify it like truly amazingly we work hard to everyone and Mm -hmm. you work so hard at it in every every direction you guys work so hard at it and it's really inspiring Mm -hmm. thank Thank you you. I was thinking I was like I need to work harder no (laughs) that's the curse of the overachiever I was was like like, I was thinking about very hard something I was like well because I was like this is, <laughs> you guys don't want to know. Let's just, let's be done. I'll tell you guys later. <laughs> I'll tell you guys later. This is the after show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we always love spending time with you and are, yeah, I mean, just the biggest fran- fans of the brand. I mean, it's changed my skin. Yeah. We, it's, it's literally just in our everyday. We use it all the time. And Sean loves it. Sean is upset. I just told her, I was like, he orders the vitamin, vitamin scrub five at a time. That's so good. Really? Has one at work, skin. has one at home, Amazing. has one in the gym. Because it's really, he has... Um, Folliculitis? Where it's just like mm-hmm. thickness of the skin. Yeah. And especially with shaving and he he breaks mm-hmm. out when, yeah, there's just kind of not that exfoliation. Mm-hmm. So it's been so... So he'll be in the shower. He'll be like, I'm exfoliating. Aww. He just love, He loves it. It has worked so, so well. But... um. So yeah, I just appreciate you both. And it's been just such a joy to work together and partner and mm-hmm. can't wait yeah. for all your events. Yeah. I come to all of them. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm, like, I'm we'll excited for the updated. one we're doing together. Yes. Yeah, I know. I cannot, <laughs> cannot wait. wait. Yeah. I'm like now that we said, now that we were talking about where we're doing it, I'm like maybe we should do it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You should always move it. I yeah. I don't, nothing's booked yet. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> so much maybe, maybe that's what the, the rub was. Okay. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Danielle and Kaylee, the amazing founders of Clear Stem Skincare. We love them so, so much. You can go to clearstemskincare.com. Use code ALMOST30 for 15% off. I highly recommend the Bounce Back Serum, the Moisturizer, and the Exfoliator. And Lindsay loves... I love the Vitamin Scrub. I love bounce back and clarity and then the hydro glow but you cannot go wrong with any of their products we just got the sunscreen it is also bomb so we trust and love this brand and we're excited to bring you a discount for you to get some super clean non-pore clogging anti-aging anti-wrinkle products and thank you to the other sponsors for this episode you can find all discount information in our show notes and on almost30.com We will see you on the next episode. Stay tuned every single week for content from Almost 30. We appreciate you and we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Bye.